Welcome back to the Chapter 14 Desk Lectures. In video three, we're going to talk about preparing and completing the investing activities section of the cash flow statement. So we did the operating activities section in video two, and we're doing investing in video three. In video four, we're actually going to do investing again, just as kind of like a second rep through it really quickly. And then we'll do financing activities to finish it off. And I think what you're going to find in my experience, investing activities is the tougher of the two, of, it's the tougher of the three. Financing is probably number two in terms of difficulty, and then operating activities is actually pretty easy once you kind of get the flow and practice it a couple times. So here are our investing activities. Again, we're talking about buying stocks and bonds, selling stocks and bonds, those types of activities. Again, other companies' stocks and bonds, not our stocks and bonds, buying other companies' stocks and bonds, and our long-term assets. Well, the bottom line is you're not going to see, I doubt you see a single problem that deals with buying and selling other companies' stocks, buying and selling other companies' bonds, because those problems are either too difficult for accounting 1211 or too easy for accounting 1211. And so where we end up is essentially kind of reviewing what happened when we did our fixed assets earlier in unit two. So looking at these items, again, in the, on the income statement, we saw the gain and loss on vehicle and equipment. We saw these items basically appear just to remove them from income. And so you'll, we'll see them in the analysis we're gonna do in this video. And looking here for investing activities, remember we're excluding cash, but everything else, all the accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, salary payable, these are all included in our operating activities. We are looking here, we're focusing on these four accounts, equipment, accumulated depreciation equipment, vehicles, and accumulated depreciation vehicles. And we're gonna start with equipment. The rest of this video is looking at those equipment accounts and trying to figure out what happened. Again, I really like this chapter. I really like investing activities because it kind of always triggered that part of my brain that likes to solve puzzles, right? And that's essentially what this is, is we have a puzzle. Equipment went from 28 to 12, and accumulated depreciation went from 16 to 10, and we have to solve the puzzle of what happened to this equipment. Did we sell it? We did, obviously, because the equipment went down. How much did we sell it for, et cetera? So one caveat before we start, the assumption is that no other equipment transactions occurred. We didn't buy any equipment or do anything like that. All we did was sell a piece of equipment and we got to figure out what happened to it. And so we're starting on a screen that might look familiar to you because I pulled this slide from our fixed asset chapter. When we did that piece at the end of that chapter where we dealt with our disposals, I essentially pulled that forward to kind of inspire us and hopefully be a little bit familiar to us. And so the first question we have to ask is how much did the equipment cost that we sold? Again, what we're essentially going to do to solve this problem of how much cash did we get for this asset is we're going to recreate the entry we made when we sold the asset in the first place. When we sold the asset. In this year, we sold this asset. We're going to use this information to make this journal entry, create it, and then use that to figure out what cash has to be. You'll see. And so the question is, how much did the equipment cost that we sold? Well, if we started at 28 and ended at 12, that means the equipment cost $16,000. $16, Remember, the equipment account always contains assets at their cost. The depreciation goes into the accumulated depreciation account. And so the equipment records and remembers, has memory of the cost of the equipment. So because the equipment account went down 16, we know, that, we know that's how much the equipment cost. And so we're recreating our journal entry here with a credit to equipment. Accumulated depreciation is next. That's the next piece of the puzzle that we're gonna kind of fill in. Well, accumulated depreciation went from 16,000 to 10,000. So what you might do if you're in a hurry and you forget the steps and haven't watched this video and don't really know exactly how to do it, is you might say, okay, I obviously debited accumulated depreciation six and move on. Well, that's not really how it works because you're missing one piece of the puzzle and that's depreciation. So when we debited depreciation expense $2,000, look at your income statement, you see we have depreciation expense equipment $2,000. When we debited that $2,000, we also credited accumulated depreciation $2,000, essentially doing this, right? So we add this $2,000 in here because of the depreciation entry. Now we're prepared to figure out what the missing piece is. All right, so the number that goes in this blue box is the same number that's gonna to help to finish up and work on our puzzle here, okay? So we've already got one piece of our puzzle solved in that we know the equipment cost. Now we're solving the second piece of the puzzle by figuring out how much of this accumulated depreciation 
it goes in our entry also. And obviously, the only way this entry works, we have 18,000 on the debit side and an ending balance of 10, and so we must have credited 8,000 in order for the T account to balance. There we are. So accumulated depreciation would have been debited 8,000 when we sold this asset. Now the second piece of the puzzle, or sorry, the third piece of the puzzle is our gain on sale of equipment. Obviously it could have been a loss. If it was a loss, we would debit instead of credit. But really it's just a matter of looking at the income statement, seeing if there's any gains or losses associated with that asset. If there are, then we need to include them in the entry as well. So here's our gain on sale of equipment here of 4,000. And essentially at this point, we only have one piece of the puzzle left. How much did we sell the equipment for? Well, if we have credits of 20,000 and a debit of 8,000, that means we must have sold the equipment for $12,000. Again, there's no other way the entry makes sense. And again, we're using our knowledge of fixed assets and our knowledge of depreciation and how these disposals work to help us solve, answer the question and solve the puzzle of how much cash did we get for this asset? All right, normally at this point, I'm launching you into a worksheet, but the way I cover this in class and the way we're gonna do this is we, we, I go through one and then we take a break and maybe that break is at the end of the day, maybe that break is in the beginning of class, whatever, and then we work through another example. Typically I do like to have this break happen at the end of a class. And so you can feel free to just kind of roll on into video four in this case, you don't necessarily have to take a break, but I always recommend it. Even if it's just a walk around the block, you know, fold some laundry, do something like that. Do something for just a minute or two and then wrap back to it. Good luck. We'll be doing investing again with our second asset when you hear my voice again in video 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 four. Good luck.